Okay, so I'd like to first start off by welcoming everybody to uh, this textbook and all the videos for understanding platelet-rich fibrin. Um, as you have entered now into the video space, we'll be able to go through all of the different chapters and you'll see videos of surgical procedures um, and some of the biology behind platelet-rich fibrin. And we'll go th chapter through chapter through all of the text as well as some of the videos. In this first chapter, we're gonna cover kind of the evolution of platelet-rich fibrin. And this is an important one to give credit, of course, to the people that um, have done a lot of development with platelet-rich fibrin. And we'll take a look at the differences between PRP to PRF to more of the no more recent uh, versions of platelet-rich fibrin. So of course, when we want to um, concentrate platelets, the whole goal is to utilize a centrifuge and separate layers based on density. In chapter two and three, we'll go over more specifically how we achieve this um, more optimally. But again, the whole concept here is from taking blood cells and taking the light cells, sending them to the top, so that's platelets. Heavy cells are the red blood cells, they're going to the bottom, and then the white blood cells are somewhere in the middle. Now, of course, all of this technology is based on the fact that we're trying to concentrate uh, cells, but also growth factors. And the three main ones are VEGF, which helps promote angiogenesis, PDGF, which helps recruitment of cells, as well as TGF-beta, which helps the proliferation of cells. So whether or not you use any of these systems, you're going to have advantages here for all of these three properties, whether it be PRP, PRF, APRF, whatever it may be thereafter. So I received this slide right here from uh, Dr. Delia Tuttle, and I thought it was kind of an interesting one uh, when she put it together because it kind of describes a little bit of the difference that we're gonna cover uh, in the textbook between platelet-rich plasma, LPRF, APRF, IPRF, and then BioPRF. And not to get into the trademarks or the trade names, but more specifically, we're gonna cover what the differences are uh, in the science. So biologically, what are the differences between these different platelet concentrates? So our goal, of course, is to concentrate cells based on their density. And for that, you need a centrifuge, so that's obvious. And of course, the biggest breakthrough, I would say, is probably uh, done by Professor Marx and Professor Arun Garg. And uh, specifically under the leadership from Professor Marx, the development of the harvest system, uh, PRP, was a real breakthrough, I would say, in, in the field, because without these two pioneers, uh, the whole field would not exist. You can see a few things here. Of course, the original harvest systems, they were quite large, so they're big. Um, they are swing out buckets, so they are horizontal centrifuges, and we'll speak more about that uh, more recently with platelet rich fibrin. And of course, they've been major, major pioneers. Some of the most cited papers uh, in the whole field are done by Professor Marx, of course, and Professor Arun Garg does a lot of lecturing uh, today on the concept of PRP. Now, one of the things about this whole concept uh, is that they're using anticoagulants. So because these protocols were lasting 30, 40 minutes, of course, they're using anticoagulants and the coagulation cascade and just clotting in general is of course, uh, inhibited because of the anticoagulants. And that's been shown, of course, later on uh, with platelet-rich fibrin that it can be improved with PRF, of course. Now, one of the things that I wanna make a comment to is that you know these colleagues also at the time were using PRP, so to speak, sometimes without anticoagulants. So that's one thing that I've learned more recently. Uh, it's been very interesting to look at some of their papers from the 80s, 90s on fibrin glue, where they just called it PRP but of course they were still making basically essentially a platelet-rich fibrin membrane. Uh, again, a lot of credit goes to these two individuals for the work that they've done in the field and the advancement. Now, when it comes to the different fields, and of course, uh, Nitwa deserves a lot of credit as well for a lot of the advancement he's made with PRGF. He's also somebody from Spain that's done a lot of work, great, fantastic papers over the years with respect to um, PD PRGF. And Dr. Shakrun is one of the first people to really call it platelet-rich fibrin. And this was gonna be a new category of platelet concentrates with anticoagulant removal. So we've learned, of course, if you wanna have better healing, the clotting is an important step. So very simply put, if you cut yourself and you start bleeding, one of the first things that occurs, of course, is clot forms. Cells and growth factors get trapped in the clot, and then thereafter you have healing. And so that clotting step is very, very important. And if you uh, have anticoagulants, by having the anticoagulants, you're preventing the clotting step. And that's a very important step, of course. So that was one of the pioneering uh, discoveries from Dr. Shakrun, and he called it platelet-rich fibrin at this point. 
And um, even those such as Anitwa that were working with anticoagulants, you'll see some of his more recent work in 2015, 2016 here, uh, implementation of a more physiological plasma rich and growth factor, PRGF, anticoagulant removal and reduction in activator concentration. So again, even those that started off with anticoagulants, you know, they've learned that if you remove the anticoagulants, um, you can improve the physiological properties of some of these original protocols. Now, of course, with the PRF protocol, the one advantage is that it's much simpler. So you're basically just going to draw blood now. It's one step, uh, one protocol, and then, of course, you end up with platelet-rich fibrin. The one disadvantage to PRF is that you have to do everything relatively quickly. So because clotting is, of course, going to occur, um, you know, you got to draw the blood, you got to spin it rather quickly, and we'll speak about how long you have to actually spin this blood, and thereafter you're going to get this clot that's going to form. So this right here is Joseph Chacroon, um, and Dr. Chacroon deserves a lot of credit for bringing the whole PRF uh, community together and kind of establishing kind of the baseline uh, in the field. Um, also, Dr. David Dohan deserves a lot of credit as well because he was the scientist that actually did a lot of the basic research studies, was figuring out how uh, cells, different cell types, found that there's leukocytes. You know, he's done a lot of work um, in the field and, and you don't see him around very often, but of course, his papers originally in the 2006 series of papers, of course, deserve a lot of recognition for a lot of the stuff that they've done. So these two guys are, you know, kind of the pioneers of the PRF type field. Um, I don't get into the debate whether or not, you know, it was done or similar or not with the PRP guys. Um, but in any event, like I said, these guys have really moved the field forward very, very uh, rapidly to where it is today. Now, other people that um, deserve some credit as well are Dr. Nelson Pinto and Dr. Mark Kruinen. And these two gentlemen, of course, have uh, presented the concept of LPRF all over the world. And they've really big, uh, been a big proponent to the technology and uh, close collaborators as well. We've written some papers together and I wanted to kind of uh, give some credit to the work that they've done. You'll see a lot of their papers being cited throughout the textbook. Um, and they've pushed the field forward without question. Um, the nice thing about them is that Dr. Pinto has really done a lot of work in the wound healing field with respect to diabetic ulcers and medical applications, and he calls it natural guided regeneration. So it's been a really interesting thing to see the work that he's been doing and where he's gone from a dentist to all the new things that he's doing. And uh, I think Professor Kurinen, one of the really nice uh, advantages for the whole community to have him part of the field is that he's a very good scientist, of course, a clinical researcher, and he's really been able to establish many, many good studies in the clinical realm where he's doing a lot of work uh, at his university in Belgium. Um, so along came uh, several years of work with the LPRF system, and then came this gentleman, and this is where you'll find more about APRF, so advanced platelet-rich fibrin. Essentially what Dr. Ganazzi uh, from Germany found was that as you spin very, very quickly, of course, in a centrifuge, all the cells are going to the bottom of the tube. And the advantage of spinning a little bit slower was that if you spin slower, more of those cells can be retained in the upper layer. And he titled that the low speed centrifugation concept. That's how APRF came about. So for those that know or spin at the APRF protocols, it's thanks to this gentleman here, um, as well as spinning slower for less time also led to the liquid formulations of platelet-rich fibrin as well. Um, so I wanted to give him some credit for some of the work that you'll see. And again, here's some histology from his lab where um, he's really shown that when you spin very, very fast, all the cells go to the bottom. And if you actually look histologically, and this is the layer between the yellow and the red here, so the plasma layer and the red blood cell layer, a lot of the white blood cells that are found in brown here are actually located right at the Buffy coat or at the bottom of the tubes. And so that's one thing that we'll talk about in chapter two. You see separation of the original PRF protocols. You're going faster for longer. So of course you get a bigger separation. If you go slower and slower for less time, you get a smaller membrane, but of course, when you look at the number of cells, there's more cells and more growth factors. So that was something that um, he's done. And of course, our team in uh, Bern, Switzerland, we've done a lot of work looking at the growth factor release here with Dr. Masako Kobayashi. And you can see, and it's confirmed, the amount of growth factors that are released, of course, when you go slower are much higher. So it confirms his low speed centrifugation concept. 
Um, our group has done some work now where today we no longer spin with the fixed angled centrifuges that you're used to. In fact, uh, centrifuges that are horizontal, and we'll talk about that, are more effective at separating cell layers. And that can be achieved more effectively with the horizontal centrifugation system. And that's the same actually as the original PRP. So when you look back to Professor Marx's work, as well as Arun Garg, you realize that, hey, they were using horizontal centrifuges back then for PRP. Why are we not using it for platelet-rich fibrin? Because of course, you'll see in chapter two and chapter three, you can get a lot more cells accumulated uh, using these devices. And so that's something that we've done a lot of work in. If you're not familiar with this um, technology, again, tubes go in up and down, and then when you swing, it'll actually go completely horizontally. And that's the basis of actually two chapters in the textbook. So again, the real advantage here is that you're going to calculate the RCF differences between the min and the max of a tube. And so cells are separated based on the density gradient or the, the g-force gradient between the min here and the max. So when you're on a fixed angle centrifuge, you can only get so much separation or so much difference between the maximum g-force of this tube and the minimum. When you go horizontal, of course, this is where you can really maximize this. And we'll specifically talk about all the advantages, of course, in uh, future chapters. Okay, so you get a bigger difference between the RCF min and the RCF max. And the other thing that has really been shown and brought to the forefront of a lot of uh, research teams is that when you spin on a fixed angle centrifuge, all the cells are accumulating on the back walls here. So you see most of the cells are accumulating on the back walls, whereas when you go horizontally, um, which was originally proposed, like I said, many years ago with the PRP systems, if you do the same thing with platelet-rich fibrin, you actually get easier and better separation of these cells. And that's one of the reasons why today we can concentrate platelet-rich fibrin uh, to significant advantages. And that's one of the reasons why we titled the textbook Understanding Platelet-Rich Fibrin, because one of the goals we have for this book is really to uh, forget about most of the commercialization behind all of these technologies and really to focus, what are you trying to achieve when you're using a centrifuge? What's the best way to separate layers? Then, you know, what's the best way to get a clot? How important are the tubes? And there's a full chapter just dedicated to tubes and how important they are. So we'll be able to cover all of these different technologies. Like I said, the one thing is that a lot of colleagues have seen these little dots here, red dots on the back walls. If you're one of these people that have seen this, this is because you're spinning in a fixed angle centrifuge. And that, of course, doesn't occur when you spin horizontally. So when you see these little dots a little bit everywhere, this is a result of that fixed angle and all the cells going to the back, as we'll review in future chapters. So that's uh, the end of this first uh, chapter. Um, we'll go on now to chapter two and uh, looking forward to see you guys throughout this textbook. Thank you.